Hello Tenno, and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. How are things going for you in Warframe? What planet have you most recently unlocked? I'm about to venture into Saturn, but one day I shall see Uranus. And that's the last joke of the video, I promise. In our last episode, we went over the basics of Warframe and how to approach it from a beginner's point of view. If you haven't seen it, I'll throw a link in the comments below. I recommend watching that to see if you can put up with my annoying voice on this journey. In this episode, we are going to build our first Warframe together, locating blueprints, customizing our ships, and what the heck you should be spending your platinum on. Oh, and we'll do some Voidfisher stuff too. The links to each section are below if you want to jump around to any specifics or replay any segments. The first thing we're going to do though is look at many issues which people had whilst attempting to unlock the Phobos Junction on Mars. We touched on it last episode, each junction has requirements to be met before we can unlock the node. These are here to teach us the game's mechanics, but they scare many people away from the game than they probably should. One in particular is driving users insane, and I have to admit the game does a terrible job of conveying what on earth you should be doing, or rather what on Mars you should be doing. So here's the Phobos Junction checklist. Defeat 150 enemies in a single mission. Easy enough, yeah? By the way, if you're not sure how many people you've murdered, simply press options and check the mission report to be certain. It is in fact the second one of these requirements that confuses and infuriates so many people. Scan three Cephalon fragments on Mars. The fragments are these glowing objects randomly found around many missions. How the feck do we scan them? Many people are screaming at their screens. Well, it starts back on your ship. Jump on the market and search for a codex scanner. It may look like a bull's head, but this is actually an item like a military pair of binoculars. You will need these, so buy a bunch of them. They are super cheap, so don't be stingy. Next, we need to put these in our Warframe's imaginary backpack, so bullet jump down to your arsenal, and at the bottom, just above emotes, is a gear slot. Clicking on this brings up a wheel which will probably be completely bare. It won't be for long, it will be filled up very soon. Choose a slot you like the best and equip your codex scanner. Once that's complete, go back into missions on Mars and hunt down those glowing fragments. When you finally stumble across a fragment, press down on your D-pad and select the scanner. Pressing the aim button will now bring up the scanner to your eyes and the fire button becomes a scan function. And that's it, you're done and dusted. Finding three of these little blighters can be frustrating, but there's one every mission on Mars. So keep looking around the randomly generated environment and you should find it. If you choose to, the scanned fragments are actually lore updates in your codex, but who wants to read? <laughs> If you're having any issues trying to find these, there are quite a few mods which will help you spot fragments through walls or put icons on your screen to find them too. So now we have two out of the three requirements needed to open the junction, but the third node once again introduces a new element to the game's mechanics. Open three Lith Void Relics. Which is pretty good because I wanted to talk about Void Fishers here anyway. The relic has been cracked open. Finish your mission to find out what's inside. Does the game give you a clue how to open Void Relics? Nah, that would be way too easy. When you get to this point, I'm sure you've already noticed random conkers you've been picking up, or bronze lettuces, or um, brown cabbages if you prefer. Well, these bad boys are actually Void Relics. On your ship, they are hidden behind the corner next to your arsenal. Open up the menu, and by highlighting over each relic type, you can see a list of possible loot inside. At this point, I should say you really want to get former out of these relics. It's another form of currency which is vital later in the game. Those forward-thinking players will always gravitate towards the former blueprints, but don't feel compelled. If you see something you like, go for it. The blue bar next to the potential loot depicts the probability of an item dropping, and of course the rarer stuff is harder to get your hands on. I'm going to pick this relic, and look, it has no chance of dropping former, please remember that. So what's next? Get your backside over to the navigation panel and look in the top right hand corner. On PS4, press the R1 button until you see Void Fishers, or Void Fussiers if you've never heard the word before. The little icon resembles fire. These missions are randomised and rotate in and out, so check back here for different missions regularly. These are just run of the mill levels with an added incentive to pick up 10 reactants which randomly drop out of dead enemies. These, in turn, will open the relic at the end of the mission, if it's a successful mission, of course. Remember when I deliberately chose a relic which didn't have a former option? Well, at the end of the mission, you have the choice to pick from anyone's relics in the mission, so former will almost certainly always be an option if you choose to go down that route. 
Alternately, do what the heck you like, farm for a frame or weapon parts. Void Relics have much more to offer than this, but for this episode, I think we're done here. We'll progress a little further next time. Next, let's go farming for a Warframe. We can hop on the market and search for almost any Warframe we want to build. Let's look at one at random, what about Nyx? And yep, there she is, ready to buy for Platinum or credits. And what about Octavia? Well, she can be purchased here for Platinum, which of course we are not ever going to do, but her Warframe is not here to buy as a blueprint. Looking more closely, she is linked to a quest and her components can be found on Lua. What have we learned from this? The market is a useful place for information about Warframes. Who would have bloody thunk it? Anyway, the Warframe we want is Rhino, as he's probably the easiest frame to obtain early on in your journey, and he still has a use in later games, so I'm told. We can purchase him for Platinum, which is not going to happen at all, and alternately we can press R1 and buy the blueprint instead. To build Rhino, we will need Rhino Neuroptics, Rhino Chassis, Rhino Systems, and we will also need to get our hands on some Gallium. So where the heck do we find the blueprints for Neuroptic chassis and systems? Well, it's from a single mission over on Venus and the node Fossa. This is an assassination mission or a boss encounter if you prefer. We are going to kill the Jackal, a mechanical quadruped with specific things to shoot. I'll show you this in a mixture of solo and team play, but I'd really recommend doing this publicly as there's usually a high level player around farming parts who will kill the boss in around two seconds. In the mission Fossa, get your backside over to the boss as quickly as possible. Once the Jackal's intro animation is out of the way, back away behind one of these pillars. Simply pop out from behind and shoot one of his legs. Once he falls, his head becomes his weak spot, so damage it as much as you can. Apart from the occasional shockwave you'll need to jump over and the constant flying enemies to be aware of, that's it. Standing behind the pillar prevents most of the shockwaves from hitting you. Rinse and repeat and then get to extraction. Try to bring a weapon with punctured damage values as the Jackal is an armoured foe. Target down. Assassination contract complete. Great work, Tenno. If you're lucky enough, you will have the chassis, neuroptics or systems in your possession. Complete the mission multiple times to get all the parts. Once that's done and out of the way, over in the foundry we can have a look at this in more detail. All three Rhino parts must be created before we can go on to create the fully functioning Rhino Warframe. Everything you need to build each segment should already be in your possession, but if it isn't, use the navigation hood and press R3 on each planet to find out where is the best place to go to pick up those resources. Now activate your 3D printer and come back in 12 hours. Don't rush it with platinum, just wait for it, it's worth it I promise. 12 long hours later our parts are ready to be assembled, but we still require gallium. An early spot to grab this is by defeating Krill on Mars, it's found on the war node. His weak spot is his coolant tank by the way. Ok back to our forge and our very last step. Let's make Rhino. It'll take your 3D printer 3 days to complete this task, please don't use your platinum to rush it. Once you've waited those agonising 72 hours, your Warframe is here! And now you can say you earned that Warframe, so go wreck bitches with it now. Anyway, let's talk about what we should be doing with that platinum we have in our back pocket. As we all know by now, platinum is the most powerful commodity in Warframe. Trade chat is full of people buying and selling items in return for platinum. The reason we haven't looked into it yet is because at this point in our journey, we'd likely buy something we could easily farm for, which is the reason we play Warframe in the first place. We will look at how to make platinum in future episodes, but for now, let's lay it on the line. What the heck should I buy with platinum? Easy. Warframe and weapon slots. Warframe allows you to find and create so many items that we don't have enough space to hold them. Without platinum, we have one single option, selling our stuff. If you're a hoarder like me or a collector, that will sound horrible to hear, but at any point, you could craft another version of anything you sell. But of course, you will have to obtain a blueprint again and farm all the parts, and also level it all the way up to 30 again. The alternative is to use platinum to purchase a slot or a place to put those items when you've got them. There's a few ways to do this. When your foundry has completed its workload and you decide to claim a weapon, you'll receive a prompt asking you to buy extra slots. My advice is simple, go for it. It's exactly the same with a Warframe, if you don't have a slot free, you'll either need to bin one of your current frames or purchase a new slot for this one. At present, the slots cost 12 platinum per weapon and 20 for a new Warframe slot. To purchase them in advance, press options and go down to your inventory. Here's everything you have. 
tab across using R1 to warframes or weapons. As I've already said, weapons cost 12 plat and 20 for a new warframe slot. Buy them here if you're afraid you may spend platinum somewhere accidentally. By the way, in here is also where you can retire and sell unwanted warframes and weaponry. And that's what I suggest you do with your platinum. Oh my word, this episode has been rather mechanic heavy, so let's do something a little more light-hearted to end. Have you noticed my ship interior continually changes? In Warframe, vanity is everything, and having a home you want to spend time in is equally as important. We all have the ability to customise our ships, but of course, the game doesn't tell us how to do that very well. It's pretty simple on PS4. Click Options, Equipment, Landing Craft, and then go nuts with the options. You can also change the external colours of your ship for those loading screen moments. Warframe is hoping you see a colour you don't already own, like those freaking brilliant neons. And the only way to get them? Yeah, it's through platinum, so buy it. And damn, I'm really thinking about doing that. Decorations can also be put around your ship like a makeshift ceiling fan for my Kubro. <laughs> Just have fun with it and make Warframe the experience you want it to be. Let's call episode 2 a wrap there. We still have so much to talk about, but let's not rush things too far. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you next time.